During this film, you're going to get a little insight into the Sopography films that we released throughout the month of August. And what I'm going to do is talk about some interesting points from those films. We go out of all different types of anglers, we go to all different types of venues, and we make a variety of different films. So there's always something interesting, sometimes it's something funny, sometimes it's something a little bit weird that we see or document whilst we are making these videos. And the first thing I want to talk about is an underwater film that we made with Ollie Davies. Now, we went to the Horton Complex and Ollie fished on the boat pool. The boat pool is a place that he's fished loads over the years. And for those of you that don't know, Ollie is a massive advocate of using pop-ups pretty much for all of his fishing. One thing we've seen many times over the years when making underwater videos is how carp react to them, particularly in the edge on clear gravel spots, which is kind of what we were fishing throughout the film. But Ollie wants to use them and he wants to use them for a reason. He knows that the carp are going to reject them a lot of the time, but even though he knows that, he still continues to use them. And there is a reason for that. And in this first clip, you're going to see carp reacting to the pop-ups and you're going to hear Ollie's reasons for sticking with them, despite the popular opinion that pop-ups in shallow water and on gravel spots are not the one. I feel like your best chance is one coming directly in from the edge of the spot without feeding near it, you know, almost beelining for it. Just coming straight in, seeing it. Well, I mean, yeah. and that's what happens, El, like yeah. a lot of the time, especially with the bigger greedy ones, to be honest. Like, they come in, they see it, they're like, I'm going to eat it, and that's it, it's done, it's a done deal. I think when they're feeding tight to the bottom, you know, like they are around the rig, I think your chances are less with a pop up. What are you when they just come in. What happens down. though often is you catch one straight away, like mm -hmm. in terms of they won't even eat much of the bait, they, they come down the and they just hit the pop up. Yeah. Like when I fished a wool pack, I was fishing an orange pop up over seed, yeah. and like the lads were looking at me like I was absolutely mental, yeah. but you were getting bites straight away because they were coming in, nailing the pop up. Cherry on the cake. They've just oh, arrived. Yes, you see how the speed they came in at. Go on. Oh, mate. He didn't take it, did he? No, didn't even touch didn't it. Even it. Didn't even wobble it. it. Looked like he was going to, though. And then they were gone. They're coming back, mate. Nah, they were passing through them ones. That was mad, he came straight down and started feeding though, didn't he, that mm -hmm. one? It's coming, it's coming. coming. There's no perch, this would be a perfect time to catch him. Come on then, go on then. No, oh, that wasn't like a knotty eye. Oh, it's... There's two in there. That's it, there's... there's one underneath it's it, isn't it? Is a big fish or just... No, it's not. Yeah, it's one, isn't it? It's that common Look at him just sat there. This pop-up's an idiot. It's a fucking idiot, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right, we could catch one still. They're still here, they're still here. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, and he's eating. Come on. Go on. Go on. Go on. No, 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 he didn't eat it. <laughs> he actually tried. No, he he tried. sort of tried to eat it. Oh. He tried to eat that, didn't he? I think he actually if wanted it, to. If it had kind of like fallen into his mouth. <laughs> Pain in the ass, this is. You're, you're on all I right. Think, was that that same comment? I don't think it, I think that was a different one. Still at the back there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's coming again. He's coming again. Perch, out of the way, please. Thank you. Go on, got him. Oh, Ooh, I don't think he ate it either. No, he didn't, mate. <laughs> Uh, the underwater angle is really interesting because you can see that they haven't eaten the bait. Um, if I was watching from above, I would have maybe thought that they would have picked it up once or twice, but they haven't actually had the hook bait in their mouth. Uh, I'm getting to the stage where I think I should really change something. Um, I've had several sort of half chances where they've refused to pop up. Um, would I get more chances with a bottom bait? Maybe. Would I hook them? I don't know. These are the sort of ruminations that go through your head all the time when you're when you're trying to 
tip the odds in your favour a little bit. And you can do that when you can see what's going on, can't you? I mean, normally I'd be looking down from above at, at them feeding, but looking from the camera, it kind of gives you that same sort of insight into what's going on. So yeah, I think I'm gonna maybe leave it half an hour longer, see if they come back in again, give them one more chance, and, and if that pop-up gets rejected or ignored again, then I'm gonna have to change something. It's interesting how they're sort of zoning in on that pop-up though, isn't it? Even though the bait that I've thrown in is fairly well spread, it's probably spread over three or four feet, it's coming in the back again there. Yeah, the stuff that comes out the spoon is very much over the Right rig, on the rig, expect, yeah, yeah. Do you have it fall on a slack line? Um, not at this depth, I'll, I'll let it fall on a tight line just to straighten the leader out. Yeah. Um, the deeper it is, obviously, I'll try and follow the lead down um, okay. so I don't put it Split away back. from the... But another technique is also, if you've got a fair bit of bait in the spoon, is as you tip it, you pull the spoon backwards and agitate it. Come on then. Please, Come on then. Please, now is the time. Yes. Yeah. You got him? Oh, oh, no, that was the first one. I don't think it went in, but that was the first one. I'd say that was a lock of chance, that was. He went to eat it, didn't he? Yeah. That was your closest yet. Mm. I don't think it went in, though. No, they, they just, they know. It's they interesting, know. isn't it? Back again on the left hand side, look. <laughs> Assistance! Do you know, it is funny though, it's sometimes just as simple as moving it in the swim. Here he comes again. Another one behind it. I don't know, different shaped tail. It's got squared off, there was three there then. Yeah, the same three, I guess. Yeah. Come. Need another screen so you two can like yeah, see what's going on, don't you? Yeah. If I look at your eyes enough, I might be you can see the, the reflection. Bit. Yeah. I mean, you can see them right clearly over the rig. It's just a shame the water's a touch coloured, then that you can't see them like. Yeah. Beyond. Beyond it. Yeah. It's a couple of hours since I dropped the rig out there, and it's been pretty interesting. We've been sort of kept on our toes by fish appearing in front of the camera. Um, one thing to note is they actually haven't fed for very long, apart from one period where the common and the little fully scaled, they hung around for about 10 minutes, had an opportunity maybe at both of those. The cast of characters have actually been quite small. I would have expected to see a few different fish in front of the camera at this point. Um, but yeah, we've got regular visits, so that's a positive. I've had several half chances and I'm already thinking what we can change in order to tip the odds in our favour a little bit of them picking it, it up. Um, what are the options available? Change the colour of the pop-up. That would be my first, my first thing. Second would be to put a bomb bait on. But do you put a bomb bait on the same rig? No, I, and it's interesting, I watched one not eating my pop-up a few weeks ago, put a bottom bait on, it came straight in, picked the bottom bait up, done itself. Like, lifted the lead, hooked itself, shook the hook out, swam off. What rig is it? On the multi? Yeah. I, so bottom bait on the multi and you got done? Basically, I didn't have any other gear with me. I just had a rod and a net, and I had a handful of boilies in my pocket, which I was crumbling up, so I literally walked the bottom bait on, yeah. And I have caught like that before doing that, but on that occasion, it didn't work out and I wish I had another rig, a bespoke bottom bait rig. I think, only, only through having seen it on underwater quite a few times, it's the pop-up more than the colour of the bait. Well, I think if you put a bottom bait on, you're more likely to get a bite than if you change the colour. No, no, I'm more likely to get a pick-up. A pick-up, okay. Will they get away with it though? I if, think. Is my rig good enough? <laughs> if, it ain't, if it ain't in their mouth, you ain't looking them regardless. No, exactly. exactly. And they want that bait, they just aren't taking it because it's a pop-up. Mm -hmm. And I think, make it a bottom bait and it's going in the mouth. But I could be wrong, so. No, well, it's, this is the, the, constant, um, the constant rumination, isn't it? You know, pop-up or bottom bait, and you're sacrificing that hooking potential of the pop-up rig for the actual pickup that you're gonna get from a bottom bait. Mm. Feeding carp, some good fish as well. Come on then. Two part, two part, two part, two part, two part. Come on then. Come on then. Ooh, oh, he picked you up again. No, he didn't. He did. He put hook bait come off the floor, mate. I'd like to see that again. I don't yeah, think he did. Yeah, he did. He did. 100%. The hook bait come up and dropped back down. Didn't go in, mate. No, but it came up and back down. He picked it up. Instant replay. 
Do you want to see? Yeah. Hang on. There's a carp at the back. We'll cut to the instant replay shortly, all right? <laughs> now let's head to our media team, <laughs> back in the studio. <laughs> Didn't go in his mouth. But it, it came, came up off the bottom. Off the bottom it came down. up about that much mm. off the bottom, didn't it? He didn't eat it. No. He might now, though. Mm. So what are we saying? Pink. Go for a little pinky. You decide. Oh, I'm, I'm deciding. I'm going for a little pink. Go, 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 go. No, no, no. There's fish <laughs> down there still. Like, look. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Watch what will happen, it'll get heated now. <laughs> really interesting. Look at this, this They're is They're feeding much better now, yeah. though. Yeah. Middle of the day, well, 10 o'clock, not mm. middle of the day, 10 o'clock. <laughs> Look at him right in front of the camera. Great footage. Great footage. Oh my God. What happened there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that hook bait's moved. Oh, you just just arrived at the wrong moment, Rich. It was like literally like here, yeah, here. Yeah. Come and have a look. He's coming now. Go on then. Go on. Yes. Oh, he's done no, you. He's done me. He's done you then. Nah. And another one just picked it up. No, he didn't. He no, didn't. What? No, the first the, the first one done me. Look, it hasn't That's even spooked. That's that common again. The common again. It hasn't yeah. even spooked. That common wants to eat that so bad. So he's had that in his mouth five, six times. Nah. Not in his that... mouth, sorry. He's had it on his lips to the point where he's moving the bait mm -hmm. five or six times. And that time, that time he, he definitely ate it. Yeah, but he yeah. wants to eat it, doesn't he? Yeah. He ain't learning by his... He knows there's something wrong with it, but keeps going back to it. Well, he didn't spook in the slightest there, no. did he? Like, he spat it out and carried on feeding next to it. Mad. I, like, I can't even pull it out at the moment. There's like four he fish down there no. feeding. No. So now I'm going to have to watch myself getting done repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> I, do you know what? I bet the fucking hook point's Sorry. turned over from uh, moving move? it against the stone. <laughs> you don't use sharp hooks, though, do you? Nah, I use dumb ones. <laughs> and you... Is that the feeding right in front of the camera as well? We can right, I'm going to move that now. I think that's right, cool. <clears throat> take the opportunity. Samir Aribi has been making films for us for quite a long time, and I'm sure lots of you have seen the ones he's put onto YouTube. Maybe you've never seen the topography ones. Maybe you'd like to. But what I want to talk about is the latest film that he's produced for us. And this is the perfect documentation of how carp fishing isn't always easy. It doesn't always go well, despite the fact it may seem like that when you watch most fishing videos, it always seems to go well for the anglers. Well, Samir makes a diary for us and he documents the highs and the lows of his fishing. And this one particular film, this is a perfect example of just a few of the problems he encountered whilst making it. Well, I've just taken a drive up the other end, had a little walk down this track, and there's three absolute massive carp in this bay. I think one of them uh, is the big one, which is uh, about 80 pounds. And um, it's accompanied by two other really big carp and two decent ones, so, there's a car parked here, I think it's actually a Predator vehicle, so I can't leave this lake after seeing what I've just seen. Also, behind me, over my shoulder, right down that far end there, there's also a load of other fish in the weed, but there is an angler on the other side, so yeah, I guess this is going to be my only option, and it's as good as chance as any, really. They're massive. I'm so, so buzzing right now, honestly. Oh, it's just the hair and the weed, mate. It's less than a metre of water. It's absolutely mental. I'm a, just hope I don't spook it when I cast. Got one chance to get this right. Just as I got my rods out, some predator anglers turned up and started casting all over my swim. But these weren't the only visitors I'd have that morning. You haven't lost your car keys, Mark. It's impossible, mate. You, you've literally just walked from there to there. I'm leaving you. 
You're leaving, Mark. Yeah, I'm going Don't to leave me. <laughs> Mate, it's the right moment and there's plenty of carp about as well, bro. Put pressure on me. I have to succeed now. How well, about me? I've got all the big ones. To be honest, there. on my video, I was just saying, yeah, Pilar comes next week. This is just like a small orientation session. You just have to look around, but now I feel the pressure. Fish no, are everywhere. Man. The fish are everywhere and they're all big as well, man. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, we make photos from each other. I'm 100% sure. Yeah, I'm sure, mate. So take care. Bon chance. And uh, give us a shout if you catch one. Adios. 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 <laughs> That's mañana, amigo. Okay, so the amigos have gone, the old predator fishers. Not before having a good cast around in that bay where I'm fishing. And I've just popped the drone up and all the carp have gone. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, I sent Mark up to the other end. Uh, and he said there's hundreds of carp up there, but it's not really any room for me to move up there. So I'm going to do the night here and evaluate the situation in the morning. But suddenly, out of nowhere, it ain't looking so great. I sat down for a breakfast in the hope that the carp might return, but things were about to get a whole lot worse. It's been a bit of a disaster, to be honest, for the last hour. The police have been here with me. They've been going through all my kit checking my batteries to see if they're certified and not some polluting battery. I've never heard of that before. Uh, anyway, they've made me take my batteries out of the waterproof cases. Um, they were unhappy with my documentation for my boat. Uh, they was unhappy with my identity card. Um, they was unhappy with my fishing license. They also informed me I need a second license to fish here because it's a nature reserve. Um, but couldn't tell me where to buy it. Luckily, uh, one of my pals uh, lives close by and he's gonna go sort that out for me now. But I've had to take my rods out of the water. I've had to take the boat out of the water because my registration number or license number, something that I've never, in the three years that I've been here, in three years I've never had a policeman. I've probably had policemen visit me between 30 and 50 times. I've never had one say, there should be a number written on the side of my boat, first time. Um, I know people have said it up at the River Ebro, you have to have the number written on it, but here I've never heard of it. Um, and to be honest, the feeling was was horrible. Like They treated me like I was actually like some sort of kiddie fiddler or something, or I don't know, or some sort of proper criminal. Like checking, checking all my identity, like I'm a fisherman. Calm down, mate. But, um, but yeah, so suddenly I've gone from feeling like I've got a shot at one of the biggest carp in the lake to feeling like it's all fucked. Oh, fucking hell. Pray for me, will ya? With today's palaver behind me, it would take well into the evening before I got all the rods out on the spots. Oh, so wet. Honestly, this troop has turned out to be one hell of a disaster. I tripped over, landed on my bivvy and snapped one of the arms. So now that's held together a bit of camo tape and a round peg. This morning, trying to get some amazing shots of the drone and I crashed it. Not only did I crash it into the lake, I ran out into the lake to try and save it. So my boots are soaking wet. Then I slipped over. Um, so now I'm completely soaking wet. Um, with the remote and my phone in my hand attached to the uh, camera remote. I'm not winning. I'm pretty sure the carp here have cleared out now. Maybe it was just like an opportunity yesterday. So I don't want to waste too much time here. I want to just get cracking on. Try and get on some of those fish before I have to go home. Get out of here. Let's go. There he is. <laughs> oh. Hola amigo. Que tal? <laughs> I'll film you, you film me. It's a fucking inception game. <laughs> hey, buddy, you good? Fish still here? Yes. My spot? No. 
No, nothing. No, they've all gone, mate. And yesterday evening, also not. No, they all went as soon as the predators started casting yeah. everywhere. They just all disappeared, mate. I was, I was 80% sure that one of your fish came here. After yeah, the one with the lump. There's definitely yeah, the same carp, yeah, mate. Is he's, he's literally swam from what a kilometer and a half away? No, not that far. It's over a thousand meters because yeah. when I put the drone here this morning, I was filming you with my drone. Oh, really? Yeah. Didn't you see my drone? It's just here. Uh, I think he was asleep still. I was taking a shit or not? <laughs> No, I just uh, put out my, I mean, yesterday evening the fish were still there. I just put my rod out and walked them out, but it's really hard because a lot of shit on the bottom. Yeah. So this morning I boated them out again, but the fish are still there. Yeah. I think I, while well, I was boating out, I sent you the, the footage. Yeah. Yeah, plenty of fish. Lots yeah. of smaller ones, but. Um, yeah, there's definitely big ones. I see them yeah. on the drone yesterday. See you later, buddy. Goodbye. Good luck. Good luck over there. I keep an eye on you, I see you. When you're playing a fish, we can run to each other, so that's nice. Yes, mate. If you need help or photographs, anything, just give us a shout, yeah? If you need help rigs-wise, boat-wise. <laughs> Don't worry, mate. I already gave you the good spot. Hasta mañana. Okay, so here we are on the other side. Hopefully this is going to give me... I've got a question for you now, and you can let us know in the comments section your answer. How many of you take your kids fishing with you? I've taken mine mm, two or three times. It can be stressful, but I'll tell you one thing, it can also be good fun. And if you've never taken your son or daughter carp fishing, I suggest that you do because uh, it's an experience you definitely won't forget and neither will they. And the more young people we get into carp fishing or any type of fishing, the better. But the next clip we're going to look at is from the Wild Man series. So a friend of ours, in fact, a colleague of ours now, because Finn now works with us, has for a long time been filming a vlog and he films just about everything he gets up to. It's a really popular series. People seem to absolutely love Finn. Very traditional style of fishing, uses all his dad's old kit and whatnot. You're not gonna see many anglers like Finn and you're not gonna see many films that are like the films he produces. But one little section from his latest film that I wanted to talk about shows our friend Tom's little boy, little Tom, carp fishing for his birthday. Now. I'm sure you'll agree after watching this that it's a lovely little section from the video and yeah, the more kids we get into fishing, the better. And this is the perfect highlight of that. What's it like? Because I get the impression you really enjoy going. I there. love it, honestly, to take them two boys fishing. Obviously, I ain't got, I ain't got little ends of my own or anything like that, but one of my best mates, Tom, he's two little boys. They're proper boys as well, do you know what I mean? They go out shooting, they drive dad's car with him on the knee and do you know, they've done all the bits like what all of us done in their childhood, like that wild, that wild childhood. And little Tom, it was his birthday and he asked his dad, uh, he wanted to go fishing. So like Tom's got down there, set everything up and I thought, right, I'll bring the, I bring a cake and a little birthday banner and get it all set up, little birthday hut. And he blew his candles out. Yeah, it was lovely. And like the best thing as well is Tom caught one, do you know? Um, I, I did fish, I, I didn't catch them, I don't usually do. But Tom's a class angler. Tom can catch from a puddle, do you know what I mean? It, he's just got that hunter instinct in him. And that's gonna be passed down to his boys and it's just lovely to watch that. And I don't know how old Thomas was. It, I mean, he can't be older than five, or, I don't think. Um, but you can see it in him how much he loves it. Like, he loves watching, he loves seeing the fish, and do you know, same as little kids do, there won't be nothing there, but he'll be like, did you see that? And it's like, nothing, but they go wild with their imagination, didn't they? It's a school night, and I've come fishing today because my friend Tom's little boy called Tom, it's his birthday today, he's five years old and it's his first ever night. So uh, he's a part of the gang, got to look after the gang. I've brought him a little birthday cake with me. I've got him some candles, a little banner to put on the bivvy. So uh, we're here to give little man, I'm shit with this camera. We're here to give little man the time of his life. Hopefully Tom or one of us catch one, make it a bit more exciting. We've got Doris with us doing her thing. She always likes seeing a carp, even though she's a bit of a moody bitch all the time. But either way, we're here, we're doing it. I've got to go and find out where he is, because I'm not too sure yet. And um, enjoy the night. Hopefully he's got a little barbecue on the way or something. Hey, little birthday boy with his cake, look. Go on, give a wish and blow him out. 
How was that, look? Your own little bivvy, Tom. Right, should we cut you some cake up so you can eat it? Yeah. And then we'll get the rods out and catch a big carp? Yeah. How big is the carp going to be? Uh, Daddy has a carp over there. Like the one Daddy just caught, yeah? I don't see it. There's Dad, look. Getting the rods out. Right, let's cut little man's cake, shall we? Yeah! Yeah? Birthday carp for Tommy boy. Yeah mate. Yeah, my birthday. Yeah mate. How old are you today, Tom? Five. Five. I got a wallet. You got a wallet? What yeah. for your birthday? No, you didn't. I got two ninja swords. I got two ninja swords and Pokemon. Two ninja swords? And Pokemon. And I did the suit. I had uh what else did I, a Christian Ronaldo kit. A Christian Ronaldo kit? And what else did I get that they got? Oh you got uh, Top the glove. Three. Guess who the game? Yeah, I got took the gloves as well. Tottenham goalie gloves. And he's right spoiled. Spoil little boy. And now you get to come fishing with daddy? Yeah. Come oh, mate. I'd love to be you today. Let's see your birthday badge. Let's see that badge look. Yeah, little birthday badge. Wicked. You saying Thomas? What if we don't jump? I'm gonna jump out. Don't touch it. I thought I was playing. So it's oh. not yellow belly. Oh my god. <laughs> well, this it's is Toby, yeah. that's not me, I don't know, do I? Toby's sitting. Huh? Cool little cart, that. Yeah. Apple. Ha! Little Doris in the background, right? Yeah. Good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, boy. Well done, Tom. <gasps> Stick that little darling back. Looks nice like that. Yeah. Flick some water. Flick some water on it. That's it. Send them on their way, look. Spuds, Tom. Yeah. Our rods are now out. Down there. I'll tell you why it's so annoying with this camera. When I flip the screen around to like look at myself filming, my head stays upside down. So like when I go like that, it's like it doesn't do it right. Yeah, rods down there. And we're fishing. Bad chair, baby set up, we're good. It's 10 past seven, the clock's changed the other day, so a couple of extra hours of daylight, it feels amazing. It feels like summer's here ready. Just got to put up with the spring rain at the minute. Yeah, happy days. Tom caught that one earlier. So he's a happy little girl. Little Tom's seen his birthday carp. So now all that's time for is for me to catch one. Bit of dinner first, bit of scran, Tom, I think, innit? Yep. Bit of scran, then catch carp. Happy days. Jim Shelley, love him or loathe him, he is a very unique person. He's a very unique angler, and he is one of the very best to have done it, whether it's home or abroad. Now, one thing that Jim has decided on in recent years is to take his fishing overseas. And the Hunter Uncut vlog that he does for us He's largely now fishing abroad. He goes to some mental places. He goes on his own for weeks at a time and he has found a new lease of life in his fishing. And last month, the video that we released saw him traveling to the Pyrenees mountains, to a crazy place, in fact, to a multitude of crazy places uh, and catching lots of big carp. So maybe you've never seen Jim on camera before. That could well be the case because a lot of the films he does are for topography and most of them are not on YouTube. So you might not have seen what he's like. You might not have had that little insight into his fishing, but you are about to. Let's do this. Three week trip. Let's see if we last it and let's see what happens. Morning. 
900 miles basically from Lower Stoff to where I'm going into the Andorra zone. So, oh, and I'm going to do it in a one So, um, I'm not really going to get there much before dark. Hopefully, just before dark, as I don't fancy driving through them mountains the last real bit um, in the dark. Are these lights gonna flip in change or what? Because I'm just gonna go in a minute. Thank you. Um, my plan is I'm gonna be up near Cassian. Um, I'm not gonna doubt I'm gonna go there, been there. Um, let's do this place second part. Do a week there or whatever, see what happens. And then go somewhere else. Planning to maybe go around Leon, mate, like Fister River. That interests me. I was going to do a lot more of that this year, but I haven't. So this trip is going to be, if I last, three weeks and two days. Ouch. Sun setting. 42 minutes to go. See you in the morning. Morning, that's the third one already. The third bite, second fish. Gonna flip that one, it's about 24 to 26 common. Right, let's get back. Only been here three and a half hours. Oh, Jesus. Got a mirror in the sack, low 30. That was the biggest one. Flipped all the others, to be fair. Well, I'm not getting them out of the pictures, they're gone. Real dumpy one. It's gonna take me a while to get over this. Couldn't sleep because of the wind. It's really, it was like, I thought the baby was gonna take off. Got the van behind me, is a lot of windshield. No. It is what it is. Oh, there's one other angler on here. He's not even bivvied up on the lake. He's sleeping in his van miles away. So there was one other on here. It's the only one I can see. Right, I need to get this fish processed. £20 common, just going to flip it, number six now, five on the right hand rod. Weird, um, just looked at the picture of that mirror, you had a nick out the tail, I think it was the one I had the uh, last trip. So you've got this massive place, barrage, what you, whatever you want to call it, and the only mirror I've caught out of all those fish is the same one twice. I'm really thinking about moving. Don't want the more small ones. Just thinking about moving down the other end in the deep water. On my mind. I'm feeling a little bit better, but I haven't slept yet. Thousand mile journey. Done that in 12 hours. Well, the, the Calais or the French part. So about, I don't know, a long way, nearly 15 out 16 hours. Right, let's get back. That's what it's all about. Sleep deprivation and still going. I need to sleep. I can calm down a bit now. Oh, sleep deprivation is not good for the mind, the body and soul. But a fucking big mountain carp is, so by say 12 o'clock, half 11, 12 o'clock tonight, I've been here 24 hours. So I've had six and lost two. So just as I was 
gonna get the fish up. I don't have a bite. Lost that one. Probably be my own fault. I, I locked the van up, put the camera kit away, just don't know who's about. But there you go, whatever, whatever. The main thing is um Giant Ormadon is done and back. So I've still got at least three weeks, maybe three weeks and a day left. Carp fishing in Canada. How many of you have been carp fishing in Canada? I bet it ain't many. I certainly never have, but I've always wanted to. When I was 13, 14, something like that, the local tackle shop to me, the guy who ran that, he used to go out to the St. Lawrence River all the time. And back then it seemed mental that you'd even go fishing outside of England, you know. My world, especially my carp fishing world, was a lot smaller back then. But as we all know, people do a lot of travelling now. And There's some guys that live in Canada and they make carp fishing videos for us. Prairie Banks, you may have seen one on YouTube. There is one on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. But we released one recently, which is so different. The fishing you see is so different to what we do here, but it's really eye-opening. You know, the phrases they use, they're Canadians, you know, you've got that very sort of Canada, America vibe to them. They're catching loads of big carp from incredible places. But yeah, the one thing I really took from this when I watched it was just how different they are in their carp fishing. And uh, yeah, have a look, see what you think. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And like I say, there is another video on YouTube made by these guys. Search for Prairie Branks and you'll be able to watch that full video. In part one, I met up with Anthony and we tried our best on Last Mountain Lake in Saskatchewan. The trip thus far proved to be frustrating with the weather and the fish just not cooperating. We still managed to catch a few fish, but they just weren't the size we were looking for. Now in part two, I am traveling east to meet up and fish with my good buddy Ryan Ginter on the magical Lake of the Prairies in search of a Canadian 40. Well, I've been on these fucking logging roads for the last 20 kilometers. Uh, not much signal on my cell phone. And everybody here drives extremely fast because they have big trucks. I'm in this little Nissan kick, but uh, we're getting there. We're not far now. I think uh, we're about 15 minutes out. And this is the road that I've been on. Look at that. Just gravel, 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 and wheat fields to the left, and, well, wheat fields for the most part to the right. Paul kind of caught notice of the larger fish I kept posting and uh, was a little bit baffled at the prairies. So he contacted me and we arranged to, to fish when we could. And it just so happened to be things lined up and we did it quick. And a few months later, we set out and filmed Prairie Banks 1. To get ready for Prairie Banks 2, we decided to go the route of pre-made pellet for animal feed some cracked corn, which didn't need much preparing, and a whole lot of boilies. I hand rolled roughly about 100 kilos of boilies, give or take, half of those being a nut mix and half of those being a pellet mix. It's a, it's a hog pellet designed to feed hogs, and I made a boilie out of it. Plus, we ordered some online, uh, these monster crab boilies, I believe. Well, I just got here and this is how I find these guys. Literally, look at them. Ryan! What's up, bro? Oh, it's been a long time, bro. It's been a long time. We got some beautiful weather today. Like I'm in a t-shirt, end of September. Oh my God, look at this clear water. Oh, you got the smallest one in the lake? I think so. All right, look at that. What a start. Look at this spot though. All right, just 
Connor. Connor. It's Connor. Connor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not right. a battle at once. Yeah, yeah, let's get him back. Ryan and I took a little time to scope out and bait the beach spot. This wasn't the spot we were going to fish just yet. We were losing daylight quick, so we packed up and left to the other spot he had prepared. This spot was only a short 15 minutes away. I got a pretty interesting swim. It's like mid-lake swim. It feels like a different part of the lake when you're at this section. Like, there's like, it almost seems like a trough here. We got some deeper water off to our right mm -hmm. and it's closer into the bank as, and as we go to the left, it shallows up into this flatty type bay. Mm -hmm. Generally we get a pro predominant like southerly winds that come down the lake. So a lot of sediment, a lot of crap gets blown up into here. You almost always feel the weather here. Okay. It's a very carpy spot. So we're casting to like, uh, you said, what, 18? I, I'm, I've been baiting up off this drop. It goes a gradual slope about down to about 18, and then it drops to 20 pretty quick. And that's where I've been putting the bait out in 20. Okay. And I've been spreading it kind of off into the right and to the left and kind of making a, a pretty, a fanning the bait out and we'll, we'll tighten it up as we start to fish. But I've just been keeping the area baited and a widespread. When was the last time you put in bait here? There's a few days in a row okay. that I've been putting in pellet and corn. Mm -hmm. So I've been switching it up. I'll do two bags of corn and a bag of pellet, or two bags of pellet and a bag of corn. And then yesterday I put in two bags of pellet, one bag of corn, and about 20 pounds of boilies. Okay. Did I lose it? No. That didn't take long. And we're into a fish. We just sat down and had a beer. And this ripped off though. We, we didn't even finish our beers. Uh, barely opened it. Wow. It doesn't like feel like a big fish, had a lot of head shakes, but. <coughs> Pardon me. All right. And the first one. Thank you for netting it. Is in the bag and I don't think it's that bad. No? So the first fish, it didn't take long. And uh, there's a reason why Prairie Banks 1 was filmed here. And that's because these fish grow to some crazy sizes. And uh, the first one's 25 pounds. Like around there, would you say, Ryan? I would say that's easy, 24, 25. 24, yeah. 25, yeah. What a beautiful, pristine fish in the prairies. An excellent start. I am dead tired, thankfully for uh, Connor here helping us film. And uh, we're gonna put this one back and wait for the next one. Well, what I was getting into last year was later on after Prairie Banks was something special and this, this lake was just turned on. Well, dude, you caught a, what was it, 33 mirror? Yeah, it was a 33 and a half mirror. Which was but absolutely that, peachy. That day and that weekend was something special in this. And it was in this spot. And it's another reason why we chose this spot. Was it here? It was in this spot. Really? Yeah, just down the bank a little bit. Okay. But pretty much in casting range. I could, I could hit the same spot I caught that mirror from right now. We were feeding just, bo just boilies. And when it came to the surface, it was pretty clear like we have now. Like the water clarity was yep. great. So it like... It popped the surface probably about like 25, 30 feet away from both of us. And we both kind wait, of like wait. looked oh, at each yeah. other and we were just like, we didn't even say a word. We just kind of like, we knew what we had seen, right? We had seen this golden flash and we we're just like, is it? Because we're like, this is what we're waiting for, right? We, we both hadn't seen something that size. And we just wanted to see a mirror regardless, regardless of what size it is. A mirror is just, it, it gives you a little bit of like shaky knee syndrome. Was that your first 30 mirror? That's my first over 30, yeah. So, 
tough start to the morning though. I'm so tired, but uh, we're here. The sun uh, is just rising shortly and uh, we're making a coffee. Hope to be into some fish really shortly. I'm in. Oh! Hold on, hold on. I got the first fish here. Yeah. Put, them, put it down. Look at that! Well, what a good time for a run. Look at that sunrise. Oh boy. And this fish is angry. He's been eating Ryan's homemades. All right, nice. We'll probably let these go like nothing, but with this sun, oh shit. Oh, I didn't do up the sides. Sorry. It's okay. It's all right. Fuck, fuck, fuck. There's gonna be more. So there we go. That's a taster of the Sopography films that were released throughout August. There was other stuff as well, you know, but these are the main films that we produce every single week and these are the more interesting ones to talk about for sure. I hope you enjoyed the film. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would all very much appreciate that. And if you'd like to watch more of our videos, 